I want to show you another demonstration on centripetal force. So this one's not uh, too much different than the penny and the hanger trick that you might have seen already. In this case, I've got a cup. Uh, it's full of liquid. Um, eventually, this lime jello is going to set and it'll all be solid, so there won't be any danger of it spilling. But for now, while it's liquid, I've got to be careful. All right. So I'll wrap that around my finger a little bit and make this thing spin around in a circle. All right, so what's spinning in a circle? Well, if I take the jello off of here, then this orange tray spins in a circle. Anything that spins in a circle must have a centripetal force. Tension can be a centripetal force. Gravity can be a centripetal force. Friction can be a centripetal force. Any force can be centripetal if that force happens to point toward the center of the circle. In this case, tension is providing the centripetal force. As I spin this thing around in a circle, the tension is always pulling toward the center of the circle. Now when I put the cup of jello on here, the tension does not act on the cup. So tension is the force that makes the disc go in a circle, and that tension is pointing toward the center, so we call it centripetal. There's a contact force between the orange disc and the cup of jello. We call that normal force, and the normal force pushes toward my finger. So tension is the centripetal force for the disc, normal force is the centripetal force for the jello. And so when I spin it around, hopefully not a single drop falls out. Well, you can see the jello has already set up and become solid at this point. So I can spin it around in a circle, and I don't have to worry about it spilling at all because it's a solid. Actually, I just put some green food coloring in some water so it would kind of look like jello. But no, it's still liquid. It just looks like it's a solid in there because everything's accelerating together at the same rate. Now, some people would argue then that there was a centrifugal force acting because if you've ever been on a ride, maybe at an amusement park, where you play the role of the cup of liquid, uh, you feel like you're getting pushed outward into the platform. But I think maybe you're just confusing the concept of inertia if you think there's a centrifugal force acting. Uh, by Newton's third law, if the disc pushes inward on the cup, then the cup pushes outward on the disc. We're interested on the forces acting on the cup because the cup is going in a circle. So what makes the cup go in a circle? The fact that the disc pushes inward on it. So it's the centripetal force that's responsible for the circular motion. There is an outward force. There is a centrifugal force acting on this disc, but that's not the reason why it's going in a circle. Remember, the reason it goes in a circle is because the tension pulls toward the center. Whenever objects move in a circular path, there must be some force pushing or pulling toward the center of its circular path. Whatever that force happens to be, we refer to it as centripetal.